Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 8 o'clock main news. In tonight's headlines, Israeli tanks and bulldozers dug in across Gaza as the Palestinian death toll reaches more than 300 people. Five suicide car bombs have killed 26 people across Baghdad as the political crisis continues. The deadline for an agreement between Iran and world powers is extended until next November. And Ukraine accuses pro-Russian separatists at the crash site of the Malaysian airliner of trying to destroy evidence of international crimes. Israeli tanks and bulldozers dug in across a mile-wide strip of Gaza's eastern frontier today and Palestinian officials said military strikes had killed more than 300 people, most of them civilians. A Palestinian family and an Israeli man were among those killed today as the casualty toll from Israel's ground campaign and rocket attacks from Gaza continued to rise. Further rocket attacks on southern Israel were reported this morning. The Israeli military said it killed a Palestinian after he infiltrated Israel through a tunnel from central Gaza. A Gaza Health Ministry spokesman said the death toll from the 12-day offensive stood at 325 Palestinians, many of them civilians and about a fifth of them children. Also today, Gazans held a funeral in Khan Yunis for nine people from three separate families who were killed in an airstrike on the area a day earlier. Israel sent in ground forces on Thursday after 10 days of air and naval barrages failed to stop rocket fire from Gaza. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon will leave later today for the Middle East to help end the conflict in Gaza between Israel and the Palestinians and to help mediation efforts. The UN said the visit is aimed at helping Israelis and Palestinians end the violence and find a way forward. Jeffrey Feltman, the UN Undersecretary General for Political Affairs, said the UN chief also plans to, in, to work in coordination with key regional and international players. Meanwhile, French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius said his country supports the Egyptian initiative for a ceasefire between Gaza and Israel, calling the ceasefire an urgent matter. A series of bombings, including three over a span of less than 10 minutes, killed at least 26 people across Baghdad today. The first explosion, a suicide car bombing, killed seven people at a police checkpoint in the Abu Dishir district in the south of the capital. Four other car bombs killed a total of 19 people, one in the Bayar district in southwestern Baghdad, one in the western district of Jihad, and two in northern Baghdad's Kadmia. The fighting has exasperated a political crisis in Baghdad, where Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki is trying to form a government in the face of opposition three months after Iraq held a parliamentary election. Iran faced Western pressure at a meeting in Austria today to make concessions over its atomic activities after it and six world powers failed to meet a July 20th deadline to end the nuclear talks dispute. However, diplomats have agreed a four-month extension between Iran and world powers on Iran's nuclear program. The agreement will be through unblocking $2.8 billion in frozen Iranian funds by, US, by the U.S. government in return for Iran continuing to convert its stocks of 20% enriched uranium into fuel. The talks have aimed to persuade Iran to limit its nuclear program in exchange for the lifting of sanctions. According to reports that negotiations will now resume in September with a final deadline set for November 24th. French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius called today for an urgent ceasefire in Gaza and reaffirmed France's full support for the Egyptian initiative to broker an agreement between the Hamas movement and Israel. Meanwhile, Egyptian Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri said he didn't see any other initiative offered to stem the violence in the region. Egypt issued its ceasefire initiative earlier this week. While Israel initially accepted the plan, it was rejected by Hamas. He added this initiative represents the complete chance for both sides to agree to a ceasefire, to stop the Palestinian bloodshed and also to lift the Israeli siege on Gaza by opening border crossings. Israel and au besoin en matière d'accès du côté palestinien.
The spokesperson of the OSCE, that's the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe's special monitoring mission to Ukraine, said today that a number of people arrived to remove bodies at the crash site of Malaysian Airlines Flight 17 in eastern Ukraine. Our reporter Dina Nasser has more on this story. Earlier today, the Ukrainian National Security and Defense Council spokesperson Andrei Lysenko said that Ukrainian government emergency ministry workers gained access to the crash site but were not allowed to remove any evidence from the area. Lysenko said the search and rescue groups were working under the threat of armed rebels. OSCE spokesperson Michael Borsecchio said that their monitors were not at the site to investigate but to observe and collect the facts. Ukraine accused separatist rebels of hindering the access of investigators to the crash site of the Malaysia Airlines plane shot down in rebel territory. The Kiev government said today that militiamen removed 38 bodies from the crash site in eastern Ukraine and took them to the rebel-held city of Donetsk. Kiev also said the bodies were transported with the assistance of specialists with distinct Russian accents. Ukraine accuses Russia of assisting rebels in destroying evidence at the crash site. Ukraine called on Moscow to insist that pro-Russia rebels grant international experts the ability to conduct a thorough investigation into the downing of the plane, a demand that US President Barack Obama issued yesterday. Malaysian Transport Minister Liao Chong Lai said the Malaysian government fears the MH17's crash site in eastern Ukraine has not been properly secured. He called for immediate access for Malaysia's teams at the site to retrieve human remains. Malaysia is deeply concerned that the crash site has not been properly secured. The integrity of the site has been compromised and there are indications that vital evidence has not been preserved in place. The Malaysian Transport Minister will travel to Ukraine this evening to ensure that the rescue operation is conducted in a proper manner by all parties involved. The Malaysia Airlines plane was flying from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur with 298 passengers on board when it was shot down on Thursday afternoon. The commercial director of Malaysia Airlines brought a team to Shipol Airport to take care of the family members and do everything they can to help them through what he described as an enormous tragedy. Commenting on the possibility of relatives being allowed to visit the crash site, he said it was deemed unsafe at the present time. Police said in a tweet that 40 pairs of detectives from the National Forensic Investigation Team would be visiting victims' relatives over the coming days. A prayer session was organised for victims and families of those on board Malaysia Airlines flight MH17, as well as calling for solidarity among Malaysians to pray for those on the ill-fated flight. Nineteen migrants have died reportedly by suffocating aboard a crowded boat travelling from North Africa to Italy. The migrants are thought to have choked on the fumes from an old engine while they were confined below deck. Rescuers found 18 people in a tangle of bodies, while another person is said to have died during the evacuation. The boat was carrying about 600 people. Italy is struggling to cope with a rising flow of migrants to its shores. Many of them make the dangerous crossing from Africa on crowded and unworthy sea vessels. A high-level storm alert remained in place as a powerful typhoon continued to batter southern China after it killed one person and damaged several houses on the Chinese island of Hainan. Typhoon Ramasun made, it, made landfall on Hainan yesterday after claiming 54 lives in the Philippines, which prompted the authorities in southern China to order the highest level of disaster alert across the region. Ramasun is believed to be the most powerful storm in at least nine years and possibly since 1973, with winds as strong as 216 kilometers per hour. More than 26,000 people on Hainan were evacuated and authorities required re resorts and tour bus companies to suspend operations for the safety of both locals and tourists. German police said several buses crashed on a highway near the eastern city of Dresden, leaving nine people dead and 43 others injured. Dresden police said the crash, which happened in the early hours of today, involved a Polish bus, a Ukrainian bus and a Polish minibus. According to a preliminary investigation, the Polish bus hit the rear of the Ukrainian bus and then broke through the central barrier, crashing into the oncoming minibus. 
Police declared that two people aboard the Polish bus and all seven people in the minibus were killed, adding that the injured were taken to hospitals in Dresden and Radibu. As part of its annual activities, Kuwait Economic Society, or KES, held a Ramadan banquet, din dinner banquet rather, or a rabga, at the JW Marriott Hotel. This gathering is one of the well-known traditions that Kuwait is famous for during the holy month of Ramadan. Our correspondent, Hiba Abdurrahman, was there and has this report. Kuwait Economic Society, or KES, recently held a Ramadan dinner banquet, Rabga, which was attended by a number of members of the society, family and friends members. Well, we are uh, very happy today um, uh, at Kuwait Economic Society to organize this, uh, what we call Rabga, which is uh, a gathering during Ramadan, a very um, uh, warm environment and welcoming and for our uh, members and guests. So we're happy, very happy to organize this. And uh, there's been, as you can see, uh, good, good attendance and just, you know, exchanging uh, uh, nice conversations and spending time with the members and um, uh, just time to get together during the month of Ramadan and see all our members and um, enjoy this environment. So we're very happy to organize this. This is part of our um, actually uh, annual uh, program. Kuwait Economic Society is an independent non-governmental organization founded in Kuwait in the year 1970 according to the order issued by the Minister of Social Affairs and Labor. It's a professional and intellectual initiative built on the fundamental premise that the key to sustainable economic development rests on real partnership between civil society, private sector and policy decision makers. The Kuwait Economic Society, um, for those who are not familiar, it's a Kuwait non-profit organization. We're um, focused on economic issue. It's been a um, very busy year for us in terms of um, uh, organizing lectures, organizing training programs, uh, trying to uh, educate the public on, on economic issue and um, present uh, whether the government or parliament with some opinions on economic issues. So we're very active in this field, but today we are purely social, uh, getting to know, I mean, spending time with our members and just um, talking and having good time and hopefully good food as well. KES focuses on promoting economic growth and reform within Kuwait economy, capacity building for its members, promoting small businesses, lobbying for legislation reform, improving transparency, and curbing corruption within public institutions in order to provide equal opportunities among citizens and strengthening its relationship with private and public sectors and the international organizations. The Rabga is a social gathering that takes place during the holy month of Ramadan after the Tarawih prayers. Also, it's a tradition that all Kuwaitis inherited from their ancestors many, many years ago. From JW Marriott, this is Heba Abdurrahman reporting for English News. For a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Kuwait News. And to recap tonight's news, hear the headlines once again. Israeli tanks and bulldozers dug in across Gaza as the Palestinian death toll reaches more than 300 people. Five suicide car bombings have killed 26 people across Baghdad as the political crisis continues. The deadline for an agreement between Iran and world powers is extended until next November. And Ukraine accuses pro-Russian separatists at the crash site of the Malaysian airliner of trying to destroy evidence of international crimes. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening.